<laughs> okay, hi, I am Erica Durant, and I am joined by my wonderful, lovely co-star, Michael Rady. Hello. Well, I don't want to cut you off. You just you just got started That's talking it. about me. Now, I know, I know, but I don't want to cut you off there. Just like, say hello, Erica. <laughs> but you were you were starting to elaborate on me and and lovely and. Well, we could keep elaborating on you. <laughs> Hey everybody, we're so happy to be here. We are so excited about our movie, Unexpected Grace. And Hallmark's movie and mysteries has a bunch of questions for us to answer. So yeah. um, we are <clears throat> in the hot seat. Are you ready? Ready to do this? Ready to answer some questions? Okay. All right. I get I get a um you, do the first one. You but you, first maybe one. you do the first answer. How does that sound? <sighs> it might be a combo, we'll see. Okay, I'm trying, I'm already trying too hard, like at work. Okay, Unexpected Grace follows my character, Noelle, who is struggling from the loss of her daughter and single father, Jack, played by Michael, who recently moved to the town with his daughter, Grace. Without giving too much away, share a little bit more on how our characters first meet. Ooh, the meet cute. Yeah, the, the meet cute. Ah, I said, I said too much. <laughs> I said too much already. Uh, I mean, we yeah, because we meet before we meet a couple times even, which is before. which is sort of fun. Yeah, there's a meet before the meet before the meet before the meet, and then it all gels together, which is quite fun. So that's what's different about our Hallmark movie. There's yeah, a few it, it, meets. It takes a while to get there. there it, we go uh, like a decent. Oh, I'm giving too much way. You're giving too uh, much. Well, you're, I want a little bit of what I would like to call like a like a maybe a run-in or something like that along those lines. It is, right? Because we, I don't, yeah. yeah we can't we, um, about it. All I know is he's dreamy and he's a gentleman and she's <laughs> used to doing everything on her own. And all of a sudden this man shows up and is very gentlemanly and she just marks that away before she goes off to work for the day. And she's like, who's that? Very, very chivalrous. He, very he, chivalrous. There, the, he, uh, the, there's a, a, a close encounter with a car. <laughs> but it, it, was, it was chivalrous. It was very chivalrous. <laughs> Listen, we've done a few of these. Each of us have done a few of these little movies. And so every time we get to do something new, when we first meet our co-stars, it's very exciting. So this was absolutely fresh and new for me and slightly alarming. But oh, one man, I think that was the very first scene we shot too was, so um, spoiler alert, it snowed <laughs> on us in Vancouver when we were shooting this. And uh, I, our very first day on set, it was like, so welcome to our springtime movie. And there's like 11 inches of snow on the ground. <laughs> And I'm in a car. The scene is I'm in a car and where you can hide all sorts of warming, <laughs> warming right. bottles, hot water bottles and everything. And you are outside the car. You are not in the car. I was in the car, car and I was cold and I would look in on him and he'd be like, he was such a rat too. Cause he's like, so hot in here. I had like soup. <laughs> Should I take off the layer? <laughs> it was like hot shock. Every cup holder is being used. <laughs> and meanwhile, I was like, very, very cold, but it's okay. I think that's kind of a classic scenario. And we played out the movie the rest of the way that way. Michael was very oh, comfortable. We laughed the whole time. <laughs> we, we did laugh so much. The whole darn time. Even though the subject mat matter, again, is a little bit somber, but hopeful. But so hopeful. But hopeful. But sprinkle in a little of the joy when you're filming those. Otherwise, they're, you bring too much downer into it. You can't yeah, do no, we did a good job at, at, at laughing through it, that's for sure. <laughs> I definitely give us an A for attitude for, for, for laughing through this, absolutely. That's good. These that's are always fun, but we had, a, we had a grand old time, and the snow just was, like, ridiculous. And so that, that was just that was an extra fun. bit of something to laugh, at, but laugh about. That's right. Okay, do you want to do the next question? I yeah, let's do it. Are you ready? Fun. Are you ready? I'm ready. Okay. Um, so... Noelle starts receiving emails from a secret pen pal and the two immediately form a connection. How do the emails help Noelle cope with her loss as a parent? Mm. Well, something that we learn about Noelle in the course of this movie is that she finds solace in the written word. She thinks she writes poetry. She teaches about poetry and she's kind of set it aside because of the loss of her daughter and her grief. And then out of nowhere from different um from a miracle in the universe, she has brought this pen pal. And this person kind of reignites that part of her that she thought was lost forever. And she gets to be a little bit of a, a role model to start with. And it's almost as if she says, you know, she feels as though, you know, 
kind of her daughter is is there with her. And so she gets a little bit carried away with this experience, but it's about finding finding a new relationship and friendship and and a little bit of hope when she's been going through a lot of stuff. Grief has been her companion. So it's a bit of a surprise that uh, was brought to her. That's my answer. Yeah. And wow. <laughs> okay, okay. It's what you will from that. Yeah, no, that was a great answer, Erica. <laughs> Thank you, I need affirmation all the time. That was great. We, well, you're, I'll give it to you because that was that was beautiful. Yeah. yeah. Michael. Yeah. You know, there is there is it's, there's there's some heavier stuff. This movie just doesn't jump into. It, it jumps into find two people at a tricky time in their lives and dealing yeah. with some some heavier stuff, which I really appreciated from Hallmark. Um, these last couple of years, I, I don't know. I, I've noticed that these last couple of years, they, they're not shying away from exploring grief and it's beautiful and it's uplifting to and it's it's i don't know it's comforting to to be able to both work through your own feelings with, for the for audiences out there grief <laughs> av avoids none of us and so it, yeah. I, it's beautiful to take that and to and to tell a story and incorporate that and it's real and it's it's yeah. that looks more interesting and um you did a, a beautiful job of walking that that line with um, the hope involved in in your care where your character where we find Noel and because on the page it could be really heavy and 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 tricky and sticky and rough and yeah. and you uh yeah the, the choices you made all through it to to bring hope and, and joy uh to all these moments were it was it was uh, it was, uh, it, was uh, it was it was wonderful to watch thank you you did a good job of memorizing my script <laughs> That was great. I feel like I should get the extra five dollars for that, right? Because totally I, was, I added the extra bit at the end, which it was you right. Did you notice that? <laughs> so good. Nobody saw it. Nobody was aware. No, no, no. <laughs> but that is the tricky thing about these kind of any kind of movie where you're looking at the real human experience and you're trying your best to show and navigate something that's incredibly difficult. And that's the strange thing is that during grief, we can be happy, we can be hopeful, and then we feel guilty because we're moving on and we're living our lives. And so, um, mm. yeah. Yeah. No. Okay, right. I'm next, yeah. right? Hit me. Okay, ready? Me. Okay. Noelle finds out that her secret pen pal is Grace and gets formally introduced to her father, Jack. Can we share how our characters form a connection? I, can we share? No, we can't. Well, that was an easy one. All right. Um, <laughs> my turn. Um, I actually had all the answers to these. So Did you have the answer to that? What about, okay, let me think about this one, right? So, so that's can we the share? Fun of these kind of movies, right? Is that in the sticky bits, in, in the absurdity of how all the relationships come together, um, it kind of mirrors what can happen in life too, right? And so you just never know where you're going to meet that next person around the corner, the next relationship you're going to have that is going to be beautiful and lovely and clumsy and strange. But when they find their way to kind of meeting each other, I found that, for example, Noelle and her connection with Jack, he was able to, he had been where she had been a little bit beforehand. And he used such compassion and empathy as a human being to kind of share his experience and his loss and, and, and what it was like to have his his journey with grief. And so it's, it's a little bit funny how they meet and it's cute and romantic and all of those things and a little awkward. So it's all the things that we love about relationships. That was my answer. That was my, that was my whole, and, you know, yes, yes, yes. I was of course being goofy, um, but yes, the grief, they really, they, they are different stages in their grief and the way he can kind of, the way Jack meets Noel where she's at and, and um, I, there was a there's a beautiful scene where we're um, we're we're sitting down and we just have a moment and um, Grace isn't there, um, although Grace is always there, isn't she? Yes, she is. It, isn't it? Yes. Uh, uh, no, we and, 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 and from America off camera looking at us like, what are they? Yes. <laughs> Is that a spoiler? What is they just being weird? What is that? Having to uh, find us oldies in there. Anyways, that's a side note. No, so so they um yeah, there's that really sweet scene on the couch in the in the living room, right? Where where they just have a chance to kind of chat and mm -hmm. and, I, and Jack gets to ask Noel what uh, they're, 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 
<laughs> they're piecing through their, their 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 history with grief. It's really it's a yeah. it's a beautiful, and I think um, I think that's where you really start to see their relationship, mm. the, the what what the potential for it, and the fact yeah. that these humans are kind of able to support and show up for each other. Whatever Jack has learned so far in his journey, yeah. And, I think, frankly, you know, the empathy that one parent can meet another parent with, with that, like, that's just. That's what, that was a whole other level as well. Yeah, it's a whole other level. Yeah. Yeah. And, and seeing how, he, I, he, Jack doesn't know any of that at the beginning. He, he, uh, he, 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 he really, he, there's, he's aware that you do, po that, that you are an English teacher, a poetry teacher. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And that's that's one of his first experiences with you. So that's I don't know. There's there's already hope involved in his vision, his his, his perception of you is yeah. that like you you've gone through the impossible. You, Noel has experienced the impossible, and here she is like still bringing beauty yeah. to the world. Um, I sometimes I think it's like the other observer. So he finds her in a in a moment, and and she's. Um, she's expressing herself through poetry. And sometimes you, you know, as the person that's in the grief, she feels lost and that she's stuck and she's not moving. But the experience that I had once, once Jack sees her in that way, um, he sees somebody that is brave and, and mm -hmm. moving forward. And, and so she just needed to have somebody else around her that reflected that to her and encouraged her that there is hope and there is joy, you know? And so that's also, I think, why it's so important that we, we take what we have and what we've experienced in our painful, <laughs> painful life experiences, which we'll all have. And then we, we get to share with each other and say, well, this is what I observed of you. And, and we can kind of help each other along the way. And I find that that is a very, very hopeful, hopeful aspect of this, of this particular movie. Yeah. And, 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 and Eric, Erica Tremblay, who plays Grace, my daughter, she, um, that character is also a nice little, looking glass or a mirror for you to see how the the beauty of your life is reflected how how yeah. it is reflected right she's seeing yeah. she's meeting um your daughter right for yeah, the first it time. felt as if that that how do, how do I describe it? So it's just like when I was playing this character, I felt like she was kind of drowning in this place of solitude. She'd locked herself away in her grief. And then little by little, the universe, whether it's for, through her friend who's her colleague at work or through her poetry or through, you know, just different meetings, the universe is going, no, there's more out there. There's more out there. There's something else. They can come back. There is versions of human beings and souls that you can connect to. And then along comes grace. And anybody who's had a younger person, to be honest, most of us work really hard to maintain that kind of way of seeing the world through a child's eyes, but it's very difficult to do that. And so often we'll need somebody to come along that is of that age, that is of that kind of zest for life. And I think that Grace just gets caught up in this person that sees life as this simple, beautiful, open thing. And she just wants to run with it and, mm -hmm. and gets kind of caught up in that whole experience. And yeah. That's, that's good like medicine Erica for it, you know. Erica brought this beautiful, and I'm not talking the third person either. Erica Tramway <laughs> just realized what that might have sounded like. It reminds <laughs> me though that Michael did such beautiful stuff in this too. <laughs> oh, let's, dear. let's not let Michael go untalked about. Michael we called her younger Erica or a smaller Erica, or conversely, I was old and big Erica, and everybody <laughs> kept apologizing. <laughs> But I was like, it's factual. I'm older and much bigger than her. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> but she brought that to this role. And it's this kind of self-possessed quality that Erica has anyway, where she knows what she wants to do with her life. Everything is quite simple and straightforward. She'd come on set, yeah. do a yeah. beautiful performance, go off and finish her schoolwork. And you and I would be like, how does she do this thing? And I know, right? Her, her work as well. Yeah. 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 Okay. That's right. <laughs> so Jack is um, so Jack is adjusting to life as a single parent of a teenager, while Noelle is trying to heal from losing her daughter. What do we admire most about our character's journey as they learn to deal with grief? Mm. Kind of, we're this kind of plays into everything we've been saying so far. Do you know what, what do we admire most? I found that it was 
quite courageous, not only in ex letting yourself experience what you're experiencing from day to day, but to be open to loving again in whatever capacity, you know, because when we, we love deeply, the flip side is the grief will be deep too, because life is about the coming and going of people. And so mm -hmm. she, you know, they both have had this grief on a different level with different relationships, but the fact that they're coming together and kind of maybe having this spark and this interest and, and that sort of thing. And I think that really, honestly, Jack pulls that out of Noelle. He's constantly encouraging her to, mm -hmm. to, um, to open up and see the joy and reflect back and see the joy of the experience that she had with her daughter. Cause she kind of locked it away. So I see a lot of courage. That's me. What about you? Yeah, I really admire, I do admire it. I admire that. I admire the courage of Noel for sure. Um, for Jack, I, I just admire that he, he's trying, he's just, he's, he's trying. And I, I, yeah. I'm a dad. Like I, we're, we're it's just as a human. I, I, it's, I just appreciate that. Like he's he's got a lot. He's got a, he's doing this alone. He's he's still at a certain stage in grief, but and he's trying to navigate his, this tricky age that his daughter, th these early teen years with, and moving her, and and he needs to provide for them. So he needs to figure out the job and where they move to and where they are now and. And so he's just, he's trying really hard and he's messing up, but he still, he shows up again. So yeah, I don't really know how to, what box to put that in, but it's just something I, 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 I like about him as I was playing with him. Wow. He's trying, he's, he's trying. Cheating. Come on, we get up and we try. We try, we, we learn on the job. We try and we learn on the job. And, yeah. and I see that in Jack and I appreciate that. Yeah, because it's it, I guess that takes bravery. Right. All of this humaning takes takes courage and it, it takes bravery. It and takes the time. Great, the <laughs> parent humaning that takes. Yeah, that takes. Try, yeah. So yeah. I guess. Yeah. That's my answer. It's good. I'm going to get up tomorrow morning and be like, I'm going to just try today. Just try. We just try. <laughs> try. Don't know until you try. That's what I tell my kids. Beautiful. You don't know until you try. OK. There are a lot of emotional moments in this movie with our characters trying to work through their own pain, but there's a lot of joy too. Without giving any spoilers, do you each have a favorite scene? Do we have a favorite scene? What's your favorite scene? Hmm. I liked I, that scene we were talking about earlier without giving too much away it's in a it's in a room of a building and the two of us are in that room talking <laughs> um no it's a there's a it's a post there's a, a post like an evening scene where we're, we're chatting and um i think it typifies exactly what this what the what what they're asking us about here which is finding you know the the the, this moment that we're meeting these characters in in their lives and, and, and the stage of grief that they're in. And mm. um, it's this beautiful moment where one character is like metaphorically just holding space and reaching a hand out to, to just to help. It, it didn't feel it's we, we, and we didn't want it to feel like a romantic scene because it is a moment where these two characters it's earlier in the script and they have this time together but we didn't want it to, there, there was this weird line to, that were like something we had to balance on with romance and with grief. Mm -hmm. And like, we, we want a connection there, but it doesn't need to be like a romance, lovey, swoony connection right now yeah. in this moment. It's, 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 a, it's a more beautiful connection, I think. And, and it's a, it, it's, there, there, there was room to, and I like Linda Lisa, our, our, director kind of just let it breathe a little bit and let us um, kind of find that because yes. there was touching involved with it. Like, you know, our bot, we were in close proximity uh, where we were sitting. So we had to have this, that pro we had to hold that proximity, that close space, but we also didn't, we had to let it feel, we had to find this, the, where it felt natural and real yeah. and believable. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And that was, that was a, that was a fun challenge. That scene, that was, that was, um, 
and it was fun to 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 do that with you because you're such a pro and 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 um it really was a it was like i we just had to figure it out was there, a conversation. no one's given us the answers we just had to find that find it and i think too when you go along with the, the good writing and when you've got linda lisa hater there she's directing it and stuff like that you if you if you go along with the story with the characters and you're just connecting it's the people that watch it that get lost in the romance of it right mm, and i think yeah. that they fall in love with those two people and they superimpose whatever they need to in their space onto that experience and and we're just you know two people trying to just trying um <laughs> just trying. People just trying. there was a scene that i really loved and and it was uh we were out on the we were out on the porch and there's a couple aspects of why i loved it it was at the kind of the apex of um a lot of the emotional stuff that was going on between the two of them and noel makes a, a major a major faux pas and you just see the compassion and empathy with which um jack has boundaries and he draws these boundaries and he he has some conflicting feelings and i just i loved the way that you did that i just thought it was really beautiful and true and natural and lovely and understanding of the space that she was she was working from so like as a just from an artistic point of view i love that and then just from like a little beside, behind the scenes it was really funny because when we shot that scene it was the end of the night and we did all of your coverage in like one take and you were phenomenal and we all just kind of debreathed at the end of it <laughs> it was no big deal and then we couldn't shoot the rest of it until the next day because we had no time Right, we have to turn around the next <laughs> night. Turn around at the end of another 12 hour day and do that scene. And so yeah. I'm kind of curious to see how that all worked out. But when we were working on it, it was nice. We felt like we had earned that moment. And that was really cool. Yeah. 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 And like, what an interesting, you'll see when you watch it, what a, what a curious, interesting moment that, that spe <laughs> those is. specific words that you had, that you're, that, that you had to say as Noel and like, and, I remember I came to it with a lot of judgment and that's what a lot of us um, talk about is like, you can originally read something or do something and you're like, that is so wrong. Why is she saying that? But you, you can't, you can't judge or you, you can't judge the people you're playing and then try to play them. Right. You have yeah, to right. That's the job to find out why she said find why, or just get lost in, in their need of that moment. Yeah. Um, but yeah, yeah that scene. Nice. Yeah, that was, I, I remember that. Something I also remember that's not exactly on point here, but Adam, our DP, never in 20 years working have I worked with a DP who used so little light. Yeah. If I was like looking for yeah. set, I couldn't okay. find where we were shooting. Not there. And I was like, I'm sorry, did you say light not there? I'm an actress. What it's, are you talking about? It's dark. It's just there's light. Hey, almost... right? He said, at one, I was asking him about it on one set. He's like, yeah, no, I just use the free light, whatever's free. So like whatever the ambient light is, I mean, he used such minimal light. If I was looking for set, I would go wherever was the darkest. Normally you like look for all the light, like, like a college, like a university campus at night, you could find set. But yeah. this is just like the darkest corner is probably where we're shooting. Yes. And then I'd go and like, look at the, I'd walk, go get the set. It's dark. There's no, yeah. they're not going to see us. And I go over and I look at the monitor and it's just, gorgeous looking yeah and i vividly i remember walking out onto the porch there and you were sitting in the chair wrapped up in a blanket because it was minus 37 yes. and uh, it's dark no one's gonna and also by the way i had like a heated vest and about 500 coats in my 20s i'd be like i don't want to look fat and i was like i don't care what i look like i am bold <laughs> put it all on and i would walk out of the all, yeah yeah it was just survival <laughs> it was just survival <sighs> yeah Oh yeah. man. Oh, I remember that. Oh, it's, it's all so many, so many little pieces of it are coming back to me right. now. So many little moments of shooting this movie. Um, okay, uh, you're up next. So this this um okay. this, I'm ready. this yeah. question comes from Hazel in Topeka. Okay. Uh, no, no, um, <laughs> okay, Hazel. All right. So uh, the loss of Jack's wife, uh, the loss of Jack's wife, Grace's mother, and Noelle's daughter, Tony leaves Noel and Jack unsure of what steps they should take next in life. What do we admire most about our characters as they navigate their future? Oh, their future. As they navigate their watch. future. Just watch them navigate. It's cute. There might be yeah. a fold or an arm brush or maybe a hug or something <laughs> more crazy. <laughs> Um, I think we talked about it though, right? It was like her. Yeah, they're, 
Yeah, yeah. There's two brave people. There's two people who are stepping, moving forward. They're 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 moving forward, right? I think that I think that's what's yeah. Uh, they're moving forward together. They see this. They 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 recognize that the the wounded uh, the wounds in each other, and 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 I think they believe that they can they can complement that. Yeah. Yeah. Their that their presence helps that wound a little bit, and that's that's beautiful. I think one of the things that Jack says to Noel at some point is talks about um, holding, holding our loved ones in memory, but with joy and remembering them with joy and celebrating them. And that's also a part of when, when a person is ready to be at that part of the process in their grief um, can have healing to, yeah. to have the gratitude and the joy and another way to carry them with you is to remember all the beautiful things about them. And so you'll see a beautiful way um, in which, Noel starts to transition into that space and work on celebrating her daughter and realizing she can still celebrate her. And that doesn't mean she's letting her go. I mean, she's yeah. there. I mean, that's it. That's what this movie is about. That this movie is about this woman in that space and, and the, the people that come into her life at that point in time that help her take that enormous gargantuan step to judge that it's a tiny step, but it's, almost impossible and these people yeah. are coming to your life to help you take that you yeah know, yeah beautiful beautiful um how was it working with the entire cast including erica tremblay who plays grace were there any behind the scenes moments that brought us closer together uh -huh. i think we bonded with erica tremblay when she told us how to use snapchat do you remember that <laughs> i never learned but Michael was just peppering her with screen time and all of those things. Yeah, I was, I was bringing up your children with that. What should I do? And why don't you tell her? What, I, what told, I told so many people that story. You know? While doing her homework and was like, just laid it out flat. It was beautiful. I was talking about screen time. I've told this story so many times in the last two months since that happened in December. But I was talking to her mother, Grace, or Grace, um, Erica Tremblay um, was sitting in the green room there and she was doing her homework. Um, and I was talking to her mother about screen time and her mother sort of has already had to deal with this with her, the older children and ah, what's it such a thing? How do we in phones and they're in high school and what do you do? And I don't know if I want to do that. And um, Erica just very sincerely looked up at me and she, she, she wasn't trying to be like um, ironic or silly. She was just being honest. She said, well, how are they going to make friends if they don't have phones? And my jaw dropped because I knew she wasn't trying to be cheeky. I was oh. like, oh my God, whoa, whoa. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm listening. I'm just gonna listen without judgment. Tell me the, tell me everything. Tell me how the world works now, Erica. Oh my God, and she did. She sat there for the next 11 hours. We cut, cut, okay, and I, okay, so now what? So how, okay, so then that, and then what? And uh, she was great, she, 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 was, she, was, she was, she was, uh, she, she was very so, patient and long suffering with us. That's what I. She liked. really was. I, yes, that's 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 <laughs> a wonderful way. That's a nice succinct way of saying it. Yes, because we were such like, I felt like such a grown up around her because she oh, she's thirteen, was, right? We were that you. We were that generation now that we're like they're learning to socialize in a totally different platform. And mm -hmm. she is such a smart kid, totally has figured out how she's going to use it. She wants to be a lawyer when she grows up. She's so grounded and intelligent and all of those things. And she says, well, Snapchat is like, okay, I have friends in class that I'll talk to, but if they're not on Snapchat, I just won't talk to them as much. And I was trying to find like a, um, something that would be kind of likened to me growing up. And the only thing I could think of is like, say you get on all the sports teams and then the kid that doesn't. Like everybody on the sports team is just going to hang out more. And the kid that doesn't, you know, you'll be friends with, but you barely get to see. So like we were, we were having fun with her and she was. We just, had 1 million questions for her. It was what? like to our head. It was such a, such a schooling fantastic. moment for us. Everybody so, yeah, in the cast was, was awesome and good. And she was so goofy. Oh, Erica, I remember. <laughs> it's one of the last scenes in the movie. Was, I, I still laugh about it. Oh, um, no. You might not remember it, but it was one of the funniest things that's ever, that I've ever unintentionally done on a set <laughs> it was scripted where we, we um at the end we have to look at each other and we have to say the same words at the same time oh and yeah I remember <laughs> it turns towards you and of course it like once you turn it's like oh my gosh our faces are right here like we're right that <laughs> far away face is right in my face and so i <laughs> i couldn't really look at your eyes i had to i, I we i 
we had to say it at the same time and it was in a wide, it was, they were shooting the wide. So we had to get it at the same time. And so your, your, your mouth's down here. And so I just remember, I couldn't look at your mouth, to see when you were going to speak words with your human mouth. And, and so then I would say the same words. And so the words I couldn't say were, couldn't whatever came out of my mouth was nonsensical gibberish. It was, I think it was, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Sorry. Every time I was like, Michael, it's three words. <laughs> oh. If this is how you make a movie about grief, folks, you laugh oh. a lot. We, it was like a sweet moment and then turn. And then was, um, uh, mm. I think they might have messed with you one time and just went. Because <laughs> <laughs> it's also supposed to be, it's supposed to be the end. So the romance has arrived and it's supposed to be kind of like cute and adorable. And how does him and how? <laughs> going again take 17 I know. so funny we laughed so much making this movie we did gosh yes and yeah. I'll, I'll talk about just one brief thing is the irony of this moment it was supposed to be the most beautiful encapsulation of celebrating and grief and loss and everything was so wonderful and it's supposed to be spring and flowers everywhere and it was snow and it was bleak and cold and so snowy. cold and we were supposed to be celebrating the, you know, the the lost daughter. And I just remember we were just like, go, 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 go. and they had heaters right below camera for us, and our lips didn't work anymore. And I was yeah. like, well, this is ironic. <laughs> yeah, I'm, that was that was some of the hardest right acting I've ever done. Whenever you have, whenever you're that cold and you have to like act as if you're not, and then say uh, do other things. Oh my, that's the hardest stuff to do. I I was so panicked that morning because um, my, my shoes were too tight or something. And so there was no airflow for the heat packs to activate. And I think we finished rehearsal and my feet were numb already. And we had 12 hours left to go on a, on a dock with a, over a frozen lake and snow and ice. Oh my gosh, it was so stressful. Good times. We, we looked at each other and we're just like, oh my God. Celebrate, <laughs> celebrate. <laughs> celebrate life. Celebrate, yeah. celebrate her life. Um, I think we covered everything except there's one more one more question, but I think we talked about it a lot. But maybe maybe you just say the question anyways because it says Michael. Okay, I can I can follow. This. Yeah, I can do that. Okay, Michael. There's a lot of hope in our movie. What are we hoping viewers will take away after watching Unexpected Grace? I mean, you as 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 the makers of it, you always hope that they will. Even if they have a shred of enjoyment that we had when we made it, that's a win yes. because we had a lot of fun making it. But I, um, yeah, I think bravery, right? Of the courage to to trust people with your grief, the courage to ask for help, the courage to try. Um, yeah, and I, I, always the belief in romance, right? That to keep yeah. keep a lo romance alive is always a nice little wish. Yeah. I know it sounds trite, and it it, it maybe it's too too light but there there is that sense of there's there's always something else out there there you know where there's an ending there is a beginning and sometimes you don't see that when you're going through grief there's no timeline for grief but if i think if you can be gentle with yourself in the process and yet at the same time be open to the opportunities that will be brought to you because i think that that's and maybe that's pie in the sky for me, but I really believe that the universe will bring um, joy and love to the people that have lost so much and, and give them an opportunity to, to experience relationship um, through those things in, in another way. I think there's always a chance to, to, to find love and to find relationship and to find healing. But also in the same sense, I want to be really careful and say that, you know, it, it could be a timeline that you know, that's something that's at your constant companion. It'll, it'll be there, but there's also hope with there and there's also love and that life will keep moving. I don't know. Not trite at all. Not trite at all, girlfriend. That was beautiful. Yeah. I mean, that's, so. I, there's nothing to add to that except that that's not trite at all. That was, yeah. Yeah. Laugh a lot. Laugh, laughter comes at really bizarre times too. Yeah. Speaking of laughter. Best. Speaking of laughter, Michael. <laughs> was that a really bad throw to you? <laughs> oh, it made me think of the scene with the puns where there's, oh gosh. 
we had to say some re- we there's like there was like script sorry i'm back on the movie again you can't leave we're ta- we're talking we're here. about the film but i think we're also supposed to play a game but let's we're gonna play a game we're gonna play a game but all okay. the laughing i i just remember not being able to there was scripted like yuck yuck parent jokes that were supposed to be kind of painful <laughs> and you just dove into it with such gusto and Erica de- next to you was just so honest Erica. with her teenage ears. Like, what? Every time she was like, oh, I could hear her beside me just going, oh. <laughs> <laughs> we were done. I was like, Erica? It yeah. was so like, easy. So laughter is a hard thing to fake on camera. It's a hard thing to fake laughter. Well, and, and again, I was- switched up this like turd of a parent joke and you laughed every time. It was so easy to do because just you were just you jumped in. It was ridiculous, <laughs> and it was. <laughs> and then we thought it was funny, and then it would end, and Eric could be like, Eric, "You guys, this is not funny." But then it was funny to us on another level because we were playing the old parents that made bad jokes. <laughs> oh my gosh, oh, that was funny. Okay, yes, we have a game to play. Speaking of fun, we have a game to play. Uh, it's a quick little rapid fire game. If you're not familiar with rapid fire, um, it's just a couple. A cup, an it's like multiple choice, except there's only two choices for each thing. We just have to choose one. We got to keep it simple for us. Yeah. Um, you ready? First one. Cupcake or s'mores? S'mores. S'mores. Done. Done. Fire. Next question. Or fire. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Enjoy pizza night at home or go out to eat? <sighs> That's I'm thinking way too hard. It's okay. I'm enjoying. I, I, the suspense is building with every millisecond. It's exciting. Go out to eat. Go out to eat. That's true. Good Pizza for you. Night. Good That's for true. you. Hey, look, I have a two-year-old, and 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 the other ones, and going out to eat is just not fun with a two-year-old. Let's be honest. So, home right now. Home. Good. Home. Next okay. Question. Hot chocolate or tea, Erica? Hot chocolate or tea? Tea. Tea. You think okay. I'm drinking tea for sure. Don't judge okay. my answer. Let's lock, no, lock it in. No, I, you, you just knew. I, I love when people are just so certain of things. And you, tea. that was like, you brought a certainty out with that tea. Yeah. They're both beautiful. They're both wonderful things. I'm so grateful for both of them. I'll go with hot chocolate. Yeah, just to be different. Sounds yeah, like just to awesome. be a little contrary. Right yeah, now. I was going to say, to be contrary. Yeah, to embrace my inner child. Okay, Shakespeare's sonnets or plays? Plays. Place done. No, you no, no. You helped me with a Shakespeare line, and I still didn't get it. And you were so patient. And you're like, because it rhymes. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, to be fair, given <laughs> because of the snow. So listen, everyone, we were supposed to film this scene like the like the last three days or something, and then it snowed in Vancouver unseasonably. And so everything got changed and they were like, oh, we're, uh, I think we're going to shoot through the whole Shakespeare thing. Uh, now we're, we're all lit for it. My face. I was like, <laughs> I don't plan ahead that far. I have kids. I was like, the sonnet today. <laughs> now you can't do this to me. Oh gosh. And because was... Look at your sweater vest. I was like, this guy knows Shakespeare. <laughs> <laughs> it's like Michael, Michael. I was just trying to, any, just however I could help. Like, oh, like, maybe so lovely. Oh, you plays always plays for me. You rock the plays for me too. It's just more, 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 more is better. No. Um, make a wish on a balloon or with a coin in a fountain. I think I should say coin. Because coin in a fountain. We're kind of got to be careful with balloons, as long as they're organic. Now, don't want to kill a bird. Biodegradable, right? Right. Biodegradable, Biodegradable balloons. Yeah, you got one. I want to make sure everyone's very clear about that. You don't want to launch a balloon. To make a wish on it if it's yeah. not biodegradable. Right? Because we're all doing our I'm part. Just throwing away money in a fountain and people don't have money. I mean, you could really just. I'm going to go. If with... you know better, do better. Right? <laughs> so. Okay. Next question. <laughs> um, spend a weekend at a cabin in the winter or in the summer? Winter or summer, Erica? Winter or winter. summer? Winter. Done. Yeah. Yeah. No contest. No contest. contest. So cozy. So cozy. It's what cabins were like. Hot chocolate. For. That's when I'd have hot chocolate. Yeah, 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 yeah. And s'mores. Yeah. And and Shakespeare plays. And oh, like, okay. of course, that one's last. It all adds up. I force you to just orate sonnets the whole time. Michael Moore. 
Say more, say more, do more speaking. Okay. <laughs> uh, I, I, this, I love spending this time with you, Erica. This, this was delightful. This was unexpected. It's not for everyone else, for the two of us. Just for the two of us, really, truly. It's yeah. been delightful. And yeah. this gives everybody a little bit of an idea of what the show is going to be like and how much fun we had making it. Thank you so much for joining us. We cannot wait for you to watch the premiere of our new movie, Unexpected Grace. Why don't you tell us when it's on, Michael? Hallmark Movies and Mysteries. It's this Sunday, March 12th at 7, 6 Central. And if you want to, if you want to live tweet during it, use the hashtag, hashtag Unexpected Grace. Fantastic. I'm going to hashtag Unexpected Grace and tweet all the time. Nice. <laughs>